Okay, so this is the, the mini project uh, lab. So in this lab, we'll be investigating uh, JavaScript, Python, and Node.js to be able to see if we can get our crypto to, to work. If possible, we'll try to merge all the techniques that we've learned around symmetric key encryption, hashing, Mac, and public key encryption. So the first thing to do is to run this page here and what we'll do is we'll generate some key pairs and see how long it takes to be able to generate them uh, using <coughs> our our uh, different devices. Okay, so the code itself will run within the browser. So it, uh, uh, it won't run on the back end. So this will allow us to understand how well the browser and the machine uh, is actually coping with the generation of the crypto pairs. And with this, we'll be able to understand what the performance hit is when we generate RSA and elliptic curve methods. So I'm first going to try it on our uh, on a Firefox on a Mac here. So let's go ahead and generate our 1000 bit or 1K RSA encryption. And we can see it's 241 milliseconds. If I now try for 2048 bit, it's 713. So let's see the difference when we look at elliptic curve key pair generation. And that did it in 18 milliseconds. 160 is equivalent to 1024-bit RSA. And we see it only took us 23 milliseconds there. 10, 23, 7, uh, 10 milliseconds. So you can actually see that the generation of the key pair doesn't uh, doesn't actually uh, change that much when we generate larger keys with elliptic curve, but it certainly does with uh, RSA encryption. So we can try it on another browser just to see the difference in the performance. And this time it's much quicker for our RSA encryption here. And it's obvious that Chrome is more optimized uh, we can see now that uh, for elliptic curve, we're seeing not much change as we generate the different sizes of elliptic curve. So remember with elliptic curve, we have our, our G point. There's our G point, X and Y. We have certain parameters, A and B. Uh, so this is uh, Y squared is equal to X cubed plus 7. And then uh, we generate a random 256-bit value, which gives the gradient, and that will give us our public key uh, point here at X and Y. So the great thing with elliptic curve is you can see that it's very quick in generating our public key, where RSA is much slower. You can see in this case, it's uh, what, nearly 1.4, it's over 1.4 seconds for RSA. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, RSA is much slower than uh, elliptic curve for key pair generation. I'll just try it on, on Safari here. So we'll go for our key pair. Let's see how we get on. 193 milliseconds, which isn't too bad. And then 1.4 seconds, that's a long time to generate a key pair. If we look at our elliptic curve, 13, 10, 12, 15, 6, 6, and 11. Okay, so hopefully that should show you that uh, there is a, a massive difference between elliptic curve cryptography and RSA uh, cryptography for key pair generation. What to do now is then to run it on your uh, mobile phone. So uh, get a mobile phone 
and then run it in the browser and see how long it will take. Obviously it will be slower because um, the processor tends not to be as good on a mobile phone. It will also be throttled back possibly to save uh, the battery. But you should see the same kind of thing on your uh, mobile device. Okay, so now let's look at the next part of the lab. Okay, so in, in this one, uh, what we're going to do is uh, going to create our own uh, crypto page. So first what I'll do is I'll just uh, clone the code to get the most up-to-date code here. Again, so it should find it here. Okay, so I've created uh, the crypto.js.html and the uh, code is actually contained in the scripts folder. So it should find there's a whole lot of JavaScript in there, which implements the core methods around uh, symmetric key encryption, hashing and so on. So what we'll do is that we'll uh, get that get that tested. So this is our little mini project. So this is similar to the web page that we saw. So hopefully when we do our hashing, there is our SHA and our MD5 and so on. We can try it. So this is hashing this input here. And then for our AES, uh, it will take the input and then take a passphrase and generate the key from there. Okay, so you can see the output formats that we actually have there. So what we need to do is now go and test. So uh, we can use OpenSSL to go to do a quick test. Okay, so the, the minus end uh, doesn't put a, a new line in, so I'll try this one. I can see here that the MD5 uh, code starts with 8B for hello. So we'll just try that and then it's there. Okay, so go ahead and uh, try it with the Python code that uh, we've created here. So, that's this code.
Ok, so we're going to hash hello. There's no salt involved with these hashes, so I don't have to add any salt. Okay, and there we go. There's A, B at the start. So that test when okay so do it for uh, these ones here and see what you what you get in return so the, the web page should show the same as the Python code should show the same as OpenSSL okay so in the next part uh, you what you need to do is to be able to check your PBK DFS too. And with that, we want to be able to uh, run it for a certain number of times and with a certain salt value. Okay, so there's the code. Just like that. And we'll paste it in. And unfortunately, we've got to just get this to. To put some new lines in because it's not pasting correctly. Okay, so we've got to take the salt value that we get and then we've got to add that. And there's the salt there, and then we have a number of rounds. The number of rounds is 1000 in this case. So let us check the code. There should be a bracket there. Okay, so we're going to take our salt value that we see generated from the web page. We're going to take our string, which is hello, and we're going to generate our pbkdfs2 uh, hash with a thousand rounds and with that salt. Okay, so there it's there. This is the salt that we're using. So you would pick the salt off the of the web page that it gives you, this here, and paste that into your Python code. So if you look at it, there's the pbkdfs2 identifier. This is the number of rounds that we go on. This is then the salt that we're using. And then this is the uh, hash that is generated. Okay, so if you remember, uh, when we use salt, we uh, identify it between the dollar signs there. And in this case, we're using a number of rounds that we go around. The more times we go around, uh, the, the slower it will take to, to compute. Okay, so you should be able to match up your values, uh, hopefully. Okay, so as I said, there's the salt that we're using, there's the rounds, there's the methods, and then we have our hash at the end. Okay, so so do the same for uh, rip, RIPMD160 and uh, see how you get on. Next thing we'll do is we'll check for our MAC codes. So we're using HMAC here. So we'll give that a try. But we'll just use one here. So in this case, uh, we sign with a passphrase or with a key. So we're generating that from the word QWERTY and we're taking a message and we're going to sign that message with our key. Okay, so we'll just give that a try. Uh, so there's no salt involved in this one. So we can see 7F here, 7F, and there is 7F there. Okay, so remember, uh, max are to take the message, to take a secret key that we generate, in this case from a passphrase, and encrypt the, the, the hash with, with that. Okay, so you should be able to uh, do that. 
and got a little node program at the end here if you want to try it out to see if we get the same answer so this is md5 here So know this uh, JS JavaScript. I'm um, using the uh, crypto library here. I'm going to create an MD5 HMAC. See there. <laughs> okay, seven F four three zero zero seven. That's the same. Okay, so always make sure when you're doing your crypto is to run it in the, with different libraries and so on to make sure that uh, what you see is cross correlated. Um, with your with your own code on a different system okay so that works fine so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to test our symmetric key encryption so this time we have a salt value that we need to be uh, using so we go to our page so just let me pick off the command that i'm going to use first get that all set up okay so we're going to take hello we're going to use cbc uh, a passphrase of qwerty to generate the key we're going to encrypt b64 and now we need the salt that we've used so we'll go back here and now what we need to do is to pick off the salt which is this hexadecimal value that in okay so just let's check what we have there let's get rid of this so we're uh, 256 cbc uh, we're using a password of qwerty we're using a message of hello with capital h remember uh, cbc 256 we're encrypting and we're using the salt value and then what we see here is the same okay so look at the last few characters c u e g equals c u e g equals the bit at the start is actually the word salted and the salt comes after this in this case it's in a it's in a base64 format so this says the word salted and then there's a salt in there and then there's the actual cipher okay so we can try that out and uh, i'm going to have a look at uh, a converter here so our B64 is this. Okay, so when I convert it back, it says the word salted underscore underscore. Okay, so that's a, a standard format that uh, OpenSSL uses to define that the cipher has been salted. Uh, the program then reads off the salt value. Obviously this will be in, in, uh, in a hex 
in B64 format in here, uh, but uh, we should be able to uh, identify the the salt that we're using, and if we use the right key, then it will be able to regenerate our value back again. Okay, so we see there salt, salted, salt, and then the cipher text. Okay, and now what we need to do is to decrypt just to see that uh, everything is okay. So we're using the minus D option here. So let's pick off our cipher back here. And I'm just going to paste it in just now. Let me paste it. So uh, let me set up the input cipher and then we'll try and decrypt this. Okay, copy. Paste there. So that's the cipher. <coughs> now what we want to do is I need to go back to the here. So we're going to try and uh, decrypt that, but the first thing we need to do is to pick off the salt. should be randomly generated salt. We'll paste that in. Okay, so if you look to see what we have, we've taken the encrypted output for CBC. Uh, we've taken our password of QWERTY, or passphrase to generate the key. We're going to decrypt. It's in basic 4 format. We've taken the salt that we've used, the input file, and now let's create the output. So I called it in.text. Okay, so we'll just check that we have the right things there. So there's the salt there. Uh, we've put in the in the cipher into in in dot text the cipher here, and that's our output, and our input format is base sixty four. Okay, so I just show you what we have there. Okay, so that's the cipher I've generated. So every time that you generate this, you'll generate a new cipher uh, because it'll have new salt. And uh, the salt value we've used is this part here. And then hopefully in add1.txt we should see our message. And we do. Okay, so that's proven that uh, we can uh, decrypt with CBC. But remember, we need the salt value to be able to do that and the passphrase to generate the key. Okay, so uh, here's a little Python program that allows you to do this. That's 
there. So just give that a little try. Make sure it's working okay. So there we go. And so uh, this again shows an example of how we can encrypt and decrypt with our Python code. So what we'll try to do is to use the salt value that we see here just to make sure that this is working okay. So the salt value I've just created is this here. generated the exact same cipher here because I use the same salt and there's the output there it's going to send a binary format and you can see the word salted in there with some characters after it and then I managed to decrypt it in the same way okay so we've checked it both in uh, in our JavaScript and within our Python and also in open OpenSSL to work with this salt okay so if you remember what we're doing we need the passphrase to generate the key and we also need the salt the salt must be stored with the cipher to be able to uh, decrypt it Okay, so you should be able to do the same thing with uh, DES. And what to do next, if you have time, is to have a look at the code with inside this page, which generates our RSA. So let me see our page source okay so the code that you've got to integrate for RSA is this code here then there's a little bit there and then if you copy this code for elliptic curve So this code here is the bit that's been added for the uh, for RSA and elliptic curve. And then then here. added a few buttons here okay so you could you should be able to copy this part here and this part here we'll call up this method with 1024 so if we find that one you should copy this function here within just after the bit here t13 just copy and paste this bit in here <coughs> and hopefully it should be able to uh, implement our, our RSA key generation okay see how you get on with that uh, if you want you can take all of the code here and copy and paste it and, and edit it down So for the last thing, we'll do, we'll do all the same things, but we'll do it in node.js. Okay, so I've included a node.js file on here. 
we just give it a, let's have a look at it first crypto.js then it's there so there's a few things left to do but uh, this is equivalent to our javascript program but we can now run it on the back end so this is us doing our hashing here uh, by default these this is the message in the password but we can enter uh, a message or a password through the arguments in the code so we'll just give that a little try hello and qwerty Just struggling with one of the inputs there. So just let me modify the code. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to Integrated. So so it's crypto JS NPM install crypto JS. And so this will download our our JavaScript files for us and it wasn't implemented so we'll give that a try now and that works perfectly if you remember before we had d4 for our hash and that is uh, that works okay so make sure you you do your npm install to be able to get that those uh, JavaScript uh, libraries in there okay so we've also implemented very basic uh, AES method there so first thing to do is to check our values and that should be okay and now what we can do is implement different modes so on this one we will implement CBC So we need a mode crypto.js mode.ecb dot cbc. We'll do the same for the decrypt crypto.js mode.cbc. Give that a try. Okay, and that. That uh, works.
then we'll just try it with a message. A password so that, that works fine. Okay, so we would get an exception if, if it didn't actually decrypt, okay. So for the next one, let's have a look. The next part is. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can check. Now what we'll do is that uh, we'll decrypt uh, certain hash value, a uh, certain cipher value. So if we go back here, and I need to generate another one. So here is the cipher for CBC. What we're going to do is to use our node.js program to be able to hopefully decrypt decrypt it okay so rather than feeding in our string here we're going to paste it in here okay so that's short circuit in the cipher there cbc that's our cipher, it contains the salt, everything should work, hopefully. Yes. And it does, okay. So the next part, we want you to be able to decrypt some cipher texts. So uh, we want to find out The cipher text for these ones. Okay, so copy and paste and put them in, into into there. Okay, so so go ahead and and try out the other ones that uh, that we have for our node.js. Shouldn't be too difficult to implement RC4 in the same way that we did before. So that's just a matter of uh, doing our code and replacing AES. For RC4, that's what our object name is called. Okay, so as just as before, we could create our our RSA RC4 here as an object, and then use RC4 here and here, and do the same for for Rabbit. Okay, so that's been an outline of this mini project.